I guarantee you that at some point, everything's gonna go south on you. Ready? How did you feel about the science in The Martian? It was pretty heavy stuff at times, but it came off in the movie pretty light. Yeah, and I think, I think Andy did a great job with the novel in the same way. I think he had such a mastery of the science that anytime somebody's a true expert at something, they tend to be able to explain it, you know, to like a six-year-old. Right. And, uh, and as, a, as a layman scientist, I'm pretty grateful for that. Like, yeah. And, and I felt that way about the book. You know, I just, it was, it was very kind of approachable, very easy. And so we just tried to hold on to that for the movie, kind of explain things as, as simply as he does. And, and, uh, and then the science becomes pretty... Better to understand, I guess. Yeah, yeah, easier to understand. Did you like science in school? Some classes. I mean, it always depended on the teacher, you know. Mm -hmm. If, um, you know, like any subject, if you have a great teacher, that you can, it can really... Uh, inspire you and f I was just talking to my nephew about this um, a couple days ago he's he had an incredible physics teacher and he's in, got this you know insatiable appetite for physics as a result um, but it, but even he at the age of 15 can attribute it to the teacher that's pretty yeah. awesome like yeah. you get stem education stuff you know science technology engineering yeah. mathematics yeah. you can get it out there do you think like movies like this kind of feed an appetite for stuff like that right now? I hope so, or I hope a movie like this can make it seem cool, because it really is, and, and you see the kind of capacity that we have, you know, and, and the kind of things, the kind of jobs you can do if you, if you focus on that in your life. It's pretty great. The writer of the script said this was a love letter to science, and, and hopefully the movie is, is just that. Yeah, do you feel like you're inspiring future scientists through this role and, you know, your previous role in other movies where you've been astronauts and scientists as well? I, I hope so. You know, I hope so. That's, a, that's certainly a, that's a, that's a lofty goal. So, I mean, uh, but, but hopefully it's one thing among many in, in a young person's life that might, that might get them excited about science. What is it about Mars that gets people so fascinated? I think it's proximity and the fact that it's so similar in so many ways and it seems like the best option for, for someday colonizing, so I think that's probably why it's always kind of held our, 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 our interest. To see yourself in the film, you know, in its final versions, and it, you're on Mars, how does that, like, make you feel? It's exciting. I mean, look, this, this film's supposed to take place in the very near future, so, you know, in the coming decades, we're going to see this type of, these types of missions going, and it's incredibly heroic and brave of people to, to, to do this kind of work. Um, but necessary if we're going to someday um, move some you know, part of the species off the planet and there, thereby kind of ensure the survival of the species. So it's incredible that, it, that it's happening, but it's, you know, it's in its infancy right now, but it's, it certainly is happening. This will come as quite a shock to my crewmates and to NASA and to the entire world, but I'm still alive. So, when it comes to the science in this book, it is some serious stuff. There's mm -hmm. a lot of science. What, did you invent any of this stuff, or is it all real? Um, all the science in the book is either real or minor improvements on stuff that's already real. So, like, for instance, the oxygenator uh, in the book is this thing that can um, turn carbon dioxide back into oxygen at scales easily enough to handle the breathing needs of six people. In reality, we've got the MOXIE experiment going to Mars in 2020. It'll be able to do that on a much smaller scale. So it's like the technology exists. We can make it, but not to that scale. Yeah, it's been inspired by yeah. kind of real things that are happening but, now. But everything in the book is real. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to, like, orbital trajectories, some of the JPL folks were telling me you calculated your own trajectories. Do you have a science background as well? Uh, well, I'm a computer programmer. Uh, and also, I've just always had a lifelong interest in the space program, everybody's space program, not just ours. And uh, so orbital dynamics is an interesting thing to me. So I kind of worked that out. Yeah. When it comes to, say, your lifelong interest in the space program, were you good at science when you were younger? Yeah, I've always been pretty good at science. <laughs> yeah. It's always been in it. I like physics. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. So that, that makes it much easier to kind of get deep into this and mm -hmm. kind of dive right in. Mm -hmm. And would you say that um, your lifelong love of science kind of started you on the path to this book a while ago? Like, can you talk about how you got inspired to talk about Mars? Uh, well, I was thinking about how we could do a manned mission to Mars how to get the astronauts there, what they can do on the surface, how to come home. Not for a story or anything, but just... Like a thought experiment. Yeah. Like you're sitting around with your friends and you're just like, you know what, if we're just going to Mars. Alone. Yeah. <laughs> Any um, mission plan needs to account for failures. Like, okay, so what do they do if this breaks? What do they do if that breaks? What if these two things break at the same time? 
they need to, you know, what would the crew do to survive? And I started to realize, hmm, this makes for a pretty interesting story. So I created an unfortunate protagonist and subjected him to all of it. When it comes to Mars, what is it about Mars that fascinates people so much? I mean, there's been a lot of stories told about Mar Mars over the years. Mm -hmm. I think it's because it's the next obvious step for human exploration. We've been to the moon. Um, Mars is the next place to go. Venus is actually physically closer, but it's going around the sun so fast it takes more fuel to get there to catch up to it. Right. Also, it's hell. Yeah. It's um, 90 times Earth's atmosphere, which is like being a kilometer underwater, and it's about 900 degrees Fahrenheit, 500 Celsius. It's miserable. What about living in the clouds? Uh, yeah, no, that's a pretty cool thing. They're 50 kilometers off the surface of Venus, it's about one atmosphere and about 40 Celsius, which is about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah. Uh, you'd, you'd, you'd still have problems with the 300 mile an hour winds right. and the uh, sulfuric acid in the atmosphere, but you know, it's a start. Uh, anyway, Mars is much easier to survive on and um, just basically a much, and takes less fuel to get there. So yeah. I think it's just the next obvious step. Plus, I think there's this uh, idea of a di diametrical opposite. It's like Earth is is where life is, Mars is lifeless so far as we know, Earth is blue, Mars is red. You know, it's just like this, you know, opposite day. It, it seems like the other the other main planet for us to pay attention to. Right. I am the greatest botanist on this planet. So you're from NASA, and you're here to you know, be jealous of the Martian or be excited for the Martian? Like, when it comes to the Martian, what brought you here? Well, you know, the Martian tells a really fabulous tale of the immediate future, a future we can see, a future that's within our grasp. And I don't mean, you know, stranding an astronaut on Mars. I really mean the, 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 the progress that we're making to actually have humans on Mars. So what's really exciting about the movie is it gives us an opportunity to tell the public what we're really doing about our journey to Mars, and we're doing a lot. Yeah, well, I mean, that leads me into my next question. So what is NASA doing to kind of accomplish the things that are shown in the movie and written about in the book? So what's happened in the book is uh, a number of things that are being written about in the book and in the movie are because NASA is actually doing them. Mm -hmm. So we're doing research, for instance, in ion engines. We have huge ion engines that we're developing. These are necessary to be able to take cargo to Mars, you know, 10 ton at a shot, land it down on Mars, the habitats, you know, uh, and the Mars ascent vehicle. All those pieces of equipment have to be hauled back and forth to Earth using ion engines, and we're developing those things right now. We also have mock-ups of the habitats, that what they would look like on the surface. Wow. We also have mock-ups of the vehicles and have tested a variety of things. And so those elements that are in the movie are indeed because NASA is already starting to develop those. When you first heard about The Martian, when yeah. was that? Like, can you describe, were you excited about, you know, somebody was writing about Mars, or were you like, oh man, this guy is probably an amateur, you know? Well, uh, the public <laughs> affairs officer, Bert uh, Ulrich, uh, contacted me as I was coming out of the cafeteria at NASA headquarters and said, can you talk to Ridley Scott at 2 o'clock this afternoon? <laughs> you know, and I said, the Ridley Scott? And he said, yeah, the Ridley Scott. And I said, sure, I'll clear my calendar. Yeah. He says, no, it's only going to be a half an hour. But I spent an hour and a half talking to Ridley and, and many of his team, answering many, many questions that they had. But also I realized that there were many questions I couldn't answer. Mm. And, and I couldn't answer it accurately or appropriately. I really needed the experts. And those people I knew. And so what I did was start to organize uh, the connections between the top experts in my organization, not only at NASA headquarters, but also at Johnson Space Center and at JPL uh, with Ridley's team. Yeah. And one of the first things we did is we took a tour. I, I had um, a tour set up at uh, Johnson Space Center. So Art Max uh, came. Uh, and Art is uh, one of Ridley's major uh, art and, and set designers. In fact, he did the Gladiator, you mm -hmm. know, some really spectacular things that he does. And so he really got a feel for what, what we're really doing. You know, we walked him around in the Habs. We got him into it. We got him into the mock-ups on ab about space station. Right. And these are the things that that you know they need to look at to figure out how to reproduce them in the movie, such that they portray reasonably accurately what those systems look like. Right. Yeah. The science is very much about the details and the semantics. So yeah. True. Would you say that the science was pretty accurate here? Yeah, I'm really happy with that. You know. Um, this movie is all about uh, communication and the interaction with the people. You know, you don't see the laser fights, you know, and there's not robots running around killing people or, you know, you don't need that for, for creating an environment of tremendous excitement. 
it makes it real. It makes what we're doing uh, in NASA uh, uh, showing the human side of it, showing a side of what it takes. You know, a lot of things that we do in terms of landing rovers or flying by planets and making spectacular discoveries look easy. But it's not. A lot of the drama that happens in those, uh, in those activities are also behind the scenes, are also part of the communication that goes on between the organizations. Yeah, well, thank you so much for talking to You're us. You're very welcome.